G'day guys, in this particular video I'm going to be summarizing for you radius of gyration. Okay, so we already know that if we've got a standard shape, then we can calculate the second moment of area of that shape about the x-axis as being equal to the integral of y squared dA, and we can calculate the second moment of area about the y-axis as being the integral of x squared dA. We've talked about these two formulas in some detail um, in, in previous videos, and we've also evaluated these second moments of areas for simple shapes like circles and rectangles. But here's an interesting question for you. What happens if our shape is significantly more complex? So let's say we, instead of having a simple circle or a rectangle, we've got some weird potato like this, right? And let's say this potato looking shape has an area of A, right? How would you calculate the second moment of areas? Well, it's, you could still apply these formulas for sure, but the calculus would get very messy and it would be very difficult to do so. Fortunately, um, something that comes to our savior is the radius of gyration, and it's defined by this formula. It's defined by ix is going to be equal to kx squared times by a, where a is your area of your shape you're trying to calculate the second moment of area about. And, and iy is defined to be ky squared times by a right, where A is also your area just here. And you might be thinking, well, what are these terms just here? These are your radiuses of gyration. So let me write that in. Now, just to make you feel a little bit more comfortable than just to say this is some arbitrary definition, I want to briefly show you that it's not completely arbitrary. There's actually some rationale behind defining these things this way, okay? Um, so. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to draw our same x, y axis just here, x, y, x, y just here, and I'm going to draw a shape which will have the same second moment of area about the x axis. So this shape is an infinitely thin and also infinitely long bar, right, which is a distance, which is a distance kx, kx away from this bar, from our axis, right? And you can go through the mass if you like. It's a fairly simple application of this formula. Um, and you can prove that this shape right here, which has an area, which has an area A, right, will have, will have a second moment of area about the x-axis as kx squared times by A. And you can prove that if you like, but that's, this is, in, this is the, this is a motivation for why this formula is defined this way, why radius of gyration is defined by this formula. In, in, on a similar token, you could also say, you could also say that if we have our standard x, y axis here, then we can have an infinitely long but also infinitely thin bar just here, which is a distance from the y axis as k, y. And if you were to calculate the, um, the second moment of area, of this bar, which has an area of A. And you can prove, if you were to calculate this, that the second moment of area about the y-axis would be equal to ky squared times by A. Okay, so I hope that's a little bit of motivation for where these formulas came from, so they're not completely arbitrary in your mind. But in general, the most important thing to focus on here is if you're given the radius of gyration, you can easily calculate the second moment of area by application of this formula. I hope that made sense, guys. Cheers.